were speculating that mm -hmm. sex, maybe sex tourism or pornography in some way in space would be, or zero gravity would, would be interesting. Ha has anybody done zero gravity sex or it, are people hooking up on the space station? What's so the, what's the, what's the... I tried to research this. So it's a good question. I, I have NASA contacts. I go to NASA centers multiple times a year giving, t teaching engineers and I, I don't ask it every time I go there, but I keep my ear to the ground. So I tried to find out. NASA have denied this for decades, of course. You know, they, right. put, they put up the corporate face and say, no, it's never happened. The Russian space agency, the same. But there's a continuing little thread of backroom astronaut chatter that says, yeah, it probably happened a couple of times. And probably in the space station, in a dark corner of the space station. But it's never been confirmed. And if the astronauts, of course, want to go up again, so they're never going to rat on their colleagues and buddies and they're never ah, going to own up to it right and there could have been homosexual sex or heterosexual yeah. sex there's men up there and there, yeah. I, there are women up there but yeah. maybe not as frequently there could yeah there are quite a lot of women now they've tried they're to balance not. out the astronaut they have corps. tried to balance it out they have tried to but so yeah there's plenty of opportunity and you know you're stuck on the space station being a sort of glorified plumber and electrician and, and occasionally a scientist for six or eight months, you know. Things can happen. Things can happen. So it's essentially impossible to confirm. But I would say, if I were betting, I would bet that it's happened. Now, wait a second. One of the most important questions we need to know would be not if people can have an orgasm in sex, but could they conceive in, uh, in space, but would right. they be able to conceive in space? So this transcends the, you know, hedonistic issues of, yeah. hey, how great would the orgasm be, or would it be right. trippy and cool to do? This is a very pragmatic thing here, is can you conceive in space? Do, have we determined if a woman can conceive no. in space? No, and, and people had very basic questions early on in the astronaut program. Could people handle going 15,000 miles an hour and having that accelerate? All sorts of things. Or right. What happens in zero gravity for six months? You know, do your yeah. bones fall apart? So no, nobody answers, knows the answer to that question. And But as a mile, just to take it to the sort of more profound level, as a sort of landmark in human history to be the first human conceived and or born in space. Wow. I mean, that's like the first humans to leave Africa or the first humans to be human hundreds of thousands of years ago. I mean, it's the first a, one to stand upright. Yeah. It's a landmark. You're, you're it's the such person a landmark. Who, yeah. who created fire. Well, talk about bragging rights. Hey, everybody. Let me take a moment to tell you about one of my addictions. Yes, that's right. Something that I cannot live without and that I have to do literally every day. And that is audible. I am addicted to the spoken word. Obviously, I am a broadcaster here doing This Week in Startups, 104 episodes a year. I like conversations. I like learning. I like nonfiction. Sometimes I like fiction, too. Don't get me wrong. But boy, am I a nonfiction junkie. I love audible because on my way to work, on my way home from work, when I'm walking, I'm trying to do a lot of steps with my Fitbit here. And I love to listen to something that enriches my mind, my life, and my spirit. And that is audible. I literally have the Platinum program, and I get, whatever that is, 20 credits a year, something crazy. So I never have to even think about what I'm buying. I just go to whatever the best, most popular books are, and I just grab like 10 of them at a time, five of them at a time, download them to my phone, and I've always got something to listen to. So I, I'm like looking through my phone here at all these incredible um, things I've listened to. Uh, Waking Up by Sam Harris and The Martian by Andy Weir are both amazing. Now, Waking Up is, uh, you know, read by Sam Harris, but The Martian is read by a guy named R.C. Bray, and he is awesome. There are other books in my, um, in my collection here that I want to point out. One of them is Building Great Sentences. Now, this is something that I would never have come across, but they have this thing called The Great Courses. I don't know what this is. I just stumbled upon it. But, you know, I'm a writer, and I try to improve my writing, and uh, there's some news coming about my writing, <clears throat> maybe a book. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I was really thinking about how I structure sentences. And so I got this book on building great sentences. And if you read some of the stuff I write at calacanis.com, what you'll find is uh, me experimenting with some sentence structure. And I really have enjoyed uh, this particular book. I'm going to make that my audible pick of the week, uh, which is... Um, Building Great Sentences. It's just really amazing. The book really helped me uh, become um, a, uh, a better writer. And exploring the writer's craft is the this, this tagline. It's uh, Professor Brooks Landon 
from the University of Iowa. I don't know who he is. I don't know what drives him, but I do know that I was just did a search for writing and I was like, I need to get better at writing. Boom. And so an amazing book. And I take a lot of walks and listen to these books. Um, unlike streaming services, you own your books. So that means you can download them and listen to them whenever they're always in sync. This is one of the great things. When I'm on my desktop, I listen to it. I get in my car, I take out my phone. It says, Hey, we, we, we know you were on this last time at this moment in time. Do you want to skip ahead? Of course I do. Yes. So anyway, that's my recommendation. Go ahead and get a free audio, audio book at audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist. You get a 30 day trial membership, download my book of the week, which is building, um, great sentences, exploring the writer's craft from the great courses. But if you want something that'll just be more for your soul and thinking about personal development, Sam Harris is waking up is amazing and delightful. I really, really enjoyed that book. And if you want to get a little fiction, of course, Andy Weir has been on my program here this week in startups and the Martian is amazing. Go to audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist. They have 180,000 titles in every genre and it's audio books, spoken word. Everything is just amazing over there. And you can also, if you're into reading, you can sync with whisper sync, um, the audio book in your Kindle. I don't do this actually because I'm, I get strained when I read, uh, my eyes get a little strained. I have glasses now for the first time. And, um, I just like to listen because for me, I'm reading emails all day. I just love to listen and lay in bed sometimes and listen. Also, I got the Amazon echo and I have hooked up with the Amazon Echo Audible. So I said, hey, Audible, play um, The Martian, and it plays The Martian from the, again, whisper synced with the same spot. So I, it, it's just amazing. And now I'm getting into kids' books on it. If you don't have audible.com, man, you're missing out because it's incredibly high quality and I just love it. Okay, this is going to be a 20-minute love letter to Audible. All you need to know is audible.com slash twist, audible.com slash twist, and thank audible underscore com. And can somebody call my friends at Twitter and get audible, audible? Let's just get them the handle audible instead of audible underscore dot com. we got to get this worked out. Um, anyway, let's get back to this amazing program. Thanks, Audible. 